Hi everyone, in this presentation I'm going to be talking to you about creating a personalized or custom Google map. Um, I'm starting out with a, with a Word doc that's displayed here where I've actually started a Google Maps planning sheet. Um, the first thing I've added to this planning sheet is a title for the map. Uh, I'm going to be building a demonstration map uh, called Northeastern North Carolina Civil War Battles and I've added the description for that map. Um, it's another thing that you can add to your uh, map uh, map description. And then I've got a number of uh, pieces of information where I'm adding um, different place marks uh, to the map. Um, I'm going to add one place mark for an Elizabeth City naval battle and another place mark for the Dismal Swamp Canal. And in advance of building this map, I've gone out and I found some information about each of these uh, sites, I've done some research. I've uh, written a little description about each site. Um, I found a URL to more information about those sites. Um, and I've gone to Flickr and I've done some uh, searching and found a couple of images which I can include in my place marks. Um, so if you do these things in advance, it certainly makes building the, uh, the personalized map a little bit easier. And I do suggest kind of doing all of your research in advance and uh, collecting this information. And one other thing that I'll just note that you can build your maps in layers. Um, so the map that I'm going to be building has two layers. The first layer uh, pertains to this information. It's about the uh, uh, Union victories in northeastern North Carolina. And the second layer is Confederate victories in northeastern North Carolina. So you can uh, begin to structure your map into different categories as well. And all of that information can be uh, kind of collected in advance, and that can help you when you get to Google Maps to just pop things in where they belong. Um, so I'm going to click my custom maps to start a new map, and I'm going to create a map uh, called... Uh, I'm just going to click up here where it says Untitled and give my map a name. As I mentioned, I have all this information, so I'll just copy it from over here. Northeastern North Carolina Civil War Battles. I'll add that in as the title and the map description. This map is presented in two layers. The first layer depicts Union victories, the second layer depicts Confederate victories. That's how I've chosen to describe my map. So once I put that in here, you'll see up here at the top, uh, you, your map now has a title and a description. And as I mentioned, you can add uh, different layers. The first layer I'm going to have is for Union victories. And the second layer I'm going to add here, click Add Layer, is for Confederate victories. Let me edit the title. Alright, now we've got our two layers in place. Let me come back up to Union victories. Uh, this is the first uh, place mark I want to add was a Union victory, so I want to make sure I have that layer active when I'm going to add that place mark. Um, the first place mark I want to add is Elizabeth City's Naval Battle. And so if we do a little search here for Elizabeth City, North Carolina, um, it will zoom right in there. Um, what Google Maps does is they they go ahead and give you a place mark. Uh, if you click that, it will show you, give you some details about Elizabeth City. If I wanted to, I could add this to the map, and that would pop it in under the Union Victory label over here. Um, but I actually want to add a different place mark because this isn't actually where the battle took place, where they've where they've dropped that. So I'm going to delete that uh, automatic place mark. And I'm going to click up here, this marker uh, icon, come back down and drop that in the middle of the Pasquotank River, where the first uh, uh, where the first place mark is that I want to add for the Elizabeth City Naval Battle. And I'm going to copy my title. I'm going to copy my description. Pop this information in. Click Save. Um, and one thing that I wanted to point out, there seems to be a bug in this program where it runs some of your words together. If you'll notice here, there's not a space between Elizabeth and City. So I'm just going to go back in and add that. There's not a space between in and February, or between small and watercraft, or between throughout and the war. Um, so this is sort of a bug, I think, in Google Maps. Um, these errors are not here um, on my... Uh, Word doc, but they run words together over here in Google Maps. So, um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, be sure to read your text to make sure it's uh, is correct uh, before turning something in. And okay, we've got the title now. We've got the description for this first place mark. Um, I actually want to add some 
some more information. We know that this uh, uh, battle is described uh, on this Wikipedia site, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add that here, um, put that URL here at the end. And if I click Save, you'll notice uh, Google Maps does recognize this as a URL, so you don't actually have to kind of code the HTML to make that happen. Um, you can just drop in a URL, and it will show it here to give your uh, readers more information about this this battle. Um, as I mentioned, I've already gone out to Flickr, and I found some uh, copyright-free images I can use in my map. So I'm just going to click Edit, and then down here in the corner, there's a place where you can add an image or a video to your place mark. Um, the first thing you could do here, um, you could search for Pasquotank River, um, and it will pull up some images. Uh, if you wanted to, you could select any of these and add them to your map. Uh, the problem is we're not sure which of these images are uh, copyright protected, so we can't really add them to our map. Um, this first search feature, therefore, is not very useful. Um, if you go to image URL, um, and you've already found copyright-free images from some other site, um, or if you know a URL to your personal images that you know are copyright-free, obviously, you could pop the URL right in here and it will show the image that it's going to drop into your map. Uh, just click select and then you'll see up here we've got uh, um, for this place mark we've now got a title, we've got an image, we've got some description, and we've got a link to more information. So we've quickly built this first uh, place mark out and I'm going to go ahead and close that and uh, and then I'm going to switch over to the Confederate layer, and uh, we want to add some more information here. Um, I know the second uh, place mark I want to add is for the Dismal Swamp Canal uh, in South Mills, North Carolina. And it looks like Google has found uh, a welcome center uh, for this canal. And I'll go ahead and uh, select that. And again, it it gives you some information. Google already gives you, it knows where this place is located, it gives you a URL. Um, this looks like pretty useful information, so I'm actually going to, in this case, I'm going to add this to my map. And you'll see when I do that, it now becomes one of the place marks under my Confederate layer. Um, so we don't have to stick with just the information Google gives us here. We can add more information to it. Um, I'm not interested in this being a welcome center, so I'm going to take that piece of information out. I want to highlight the battle rather than the welcome center. Uh, I'm going to select my descriptive text and pop that in over here um, and save. And again, it looks like there's some text errors. Uh, I'm going to have to add a space here, here, and here to clean up my text. Save that and I know this is described in more details on this Wikipedia site so I'll save that URL, come over here and paste that in uh, for more information add the URL here to the end and when I save again it shows that URL to more information and the next thing I want to add is a another image and I'm gonna capture my Flickr the uh, URL to my image over here and add that in. Click uh, select and now we've got again we've built out this place mark very quickly. We've got the title, we've got the image, the description, a link to more information and even more information that was pre-populated by Google down here at the bottom. So we've got quite a bit of information on this one place mark. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, which I know creates problems uh, for uh, students sometimes, is this uh, this idea of uh, popping in these photos uh, for uh, the search. Um, so let's just put um, another place mark down here to uh, show you what I'm talking about. When you click um, this add image or video button, um, as I mentioned, if you know in advance that you can just uh, pop in a URL here, that's that's all well and good, but how did I get to this uh, get this URL in the first place? Um, let me switch over to Flickr and if we're searching for something, if we know we want to search for like the Dismal Swamp and we click search everyone's uploads, um, it's going to pull up a number of images and again we don't really know which of these are copyright free or not, uh, but if you click this advanced search option 
uh, and you come down here to the bottom, Flickr is a good place to search for media uh, because it allows you to search for uh, both photos and videos. It allows you to search for items that are licensed within the Creative Commons uh, where people have said it's okay to take their media and uh, add it or use, you know, build upon uh, what they've done, add it to your, uh, your production, if you will. So we'll go ahead and search for that. And you'll notice different images come up now because a lot of those images originally that we saw were, were copyright protected. Um, if we find an image that looks maybe like the uh, not 21st century uh, with these people, uh, but maybe this one up here at the top, this might be a good one to include on a Civil War map. It doesn't show any modern features. Um, what you want to do is collect or uh, click on this icon where it says share this photo. And I found that um, you know you need to pick in advance the size of the image that you want to pop into Flickr. Uh, so I found that the largest of the small sizes works pretty well. This small 320 by 240. Uh, so if you select that, then copy this entire line of code. We'll, we'll now come back over to uh, Google Maps and we can paste this in here but there's going to be a lot of information that we don't really need um, all we really need is the image URL and let me actually go back out and do that again um, I picked the wrong thing so excuse me <laughs> you can see where this is tricky alright so back let me start over so back in Flickr uh, we click this share this photo URL, we click HTML, and we click down here again, HTML, not the embed, but the HTML button. Um, we pick the size of the image that we want to bring into Google Maps, and then we click and copy this line of code. So let me come back over to Google Maps. I will paste that in. And again, there's too much information here that Google Maps can't interpret, so we want to delete everything after JPEG and everything before HTTPS. So all we really want is this this URL to the JPEG image. And once we have that, we just click select and it becomes a part of our placemark. It's uh, referencing the image on that Flickr server, if you will. Um, so that kind of gives you some information about how to get uh, images that are safe to build upon and add uh, to your Google Maps. And let's see, I guess I'll close that out. Um, we don't really need this place mark, it was for demonstration. I'll delete it. Um, one more thing to show you about your layers over here. Um, now that we have different place marks in our layers, you can actually style your layers a little bit. You can pick a sequence of colors and letters, um, you can pick um, labels so that the name shows up. Um, let me do that for the Confederate layer as well. Uh, when you pick a sequence of colors and letters, um, you'll notice now it says A for the place mark, whereas before it was just a plain red place mark. Now it's labeled, and when you add the next place mark to this layer, it will say B, and it will be in a different color. Um, so that can help to sort of differentiate between your, uh, your place marks. I think that's a useful thing to include. Um, and again, I'll add the name as a label, and it will add the name of this uh, placemark to the placemark Dismal Swamp Canal. And so that's just one way to, again, uh, show your different uh, layers um, or uh, customize your layers, if you will, with uh, to, so that the placemarks uh, are a little bit more visible. Uh, we've got the, just the title of the placemarks now, not just a blank red uh, placemark, if you will. Alright, so I've zoomed out. This is the makings of a uh, Google Map, and we don't have too many place marks in place, but I'll, it's just for demonstration purposes. I'll go ahead and, uh, at this point, if I'm finished editing my map, the next thing I would do is click Share, this little green button up here in the upper right-hand corner. Um, by default, Google Maps starts uh, gives you a private uh, setting where nobody can see or edit your map. Uh, you can actually change this. Um, if you wanted uh, people to be able to edit it, you could do that. Uh, I think for most of the purposes, for the students in my classes, we just want to share it with people who have the link 
so I suggest you pick this middle option where anyone with the link can actually see uh, your Google map. Click Save. And now that we've changed those privacy settings, um, you can click and copy this link up here at the top. Uh, and again, in a lot of my classes, if I ask you to share your Google map on a discussion board and where your peers can access it and comment on it, uh, this would be the link that you copy and post onto that discussion board to share with your peers. Uh, so I'll click Done. This map is shared. And that gives you the basics, I think, of uh, starting a Google map. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.